Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So if you've been following me for quite some time, then you may remember that I did the Grinch last year for Christmas and he was 30 inches tall. Um, and last year was, it's been a while. So I've had 12 months of hardcore crafting and doing YouTube videos. So I wanted to revisit the Grinch because I feel like maybe there were some things that I did last year that I hadn't learned yet. And so I wanted to redo the Grinch I also found Cindy Lou Who, and I love this image. I'm gonna talk about that as well. Cindy Lou Who will be um, a second video. I'm gonna do two videos back to back, because uh, I wanna put this, I actually bought a fake Christmas tree. Well, I am a fake Christmas tree person in general, <laughs> but I bought one for my craft room. They are on sale at Michael's. So today is what, October 29th and Michael's is having this crazy sale. So there's a four foot fake Christmas tree that's pre-lit um, on sale for $24. So I'm like, okay, I'm buying that so that I can take all my pictures with the Grinch and Cindy Lou Who next to the tree and it's gonna look amazing and all my wrapped Christmas presents. Um, so it's, you know, all for the sake of my YouTube channel. <laughs> all right, but I wanted to talk about off the mat first because when I saw this Cindy Lou Who image, it was perfection for me because um, most of the images that I've seen for Cindy Lou Who is she's wearing this pink nightgown, but it is the nightgown is one piece, um, like from her toes, well, her feet, right? This is um, usually what I see is it's all the way up. The only piece that's not part of her pajamas that's separated is the collar, right? So that means, and of course it's a light pink, um, you know, set of pajamas. So even using glitter cardstock, you would see a seam um, somewhere along here. But this one, what's awesome is there's this um, ornament. So it breaks up the, the pajamas into two, right? So here's the bottom, which means if we really wanted to make this big, the bottom here could be 11 inches. And then, you know, now you have Cindy Lou Who easily hitting about 28 inches without any seams. So I just love this one. Now, I am gonna make her next to the Grinch, so she's not gonna need to be that tall, but she will be seamless then. So she's just gonna look so cute. All right, so I have the two images here because I wanted to make the Grinch really big, and then I wanted to make Cindy Lou Who comparable in size. Uh, normally, if you just do one or the other, then you can make Cindy Lou Who as big as you want, like 30 inches, right? But I'm not gonna make the Grinch 30 inch, inches and then Cindy Lou Who 30 inches is gonna look really weird side by side. All right, so um, let's change the Grinch to 30 inches and I'll talk about where we had the seams last year. Okay, so at 30 inches, where we had the seams was right here. I cut it right where was, the ankles were super skinny. I did green glitter cardstock. You couldn't see it at all. Um, but I was looking at this image earlier and I'm almost wondering if I should just cut a seam right here, like connect these two black pieces and make it so that this leg is its own little piece. And then that way, I'm gonna again do the seams right around here, but it's just gonna be on one foot. And so maybe it won't be so, it wasn't noticeable at all before, but I'm just curious if I should do that because that might give me a little bit more leeway. Okay, so this is 30 inches. I feel like I wanna do him a little bit bigger. The Christmas tree that I bought is 48 inches. So if I did 30, I feel like he's gonna be so much smaller than the Christmas tree. So let's do him at three feet. So at 36 inches. Um, so let's zoom out. And then Cindy Lou Who, she's 16 inches there. I think I wanna make her about, let's make her 22 inches. That looks, that looks good, right? <laughs> of course, everyone's nodding and saying yes. I'm writing this down so that I can remember Cindy Lou Who. Cindy is gonna be at 22 inches in my next video. <laughs> and then, um, we're gonna make the Grinch, what did we end up with the Grinch? At 36 inches, okay. 
All right, so let's do this. Let's make the Grinch 36 inches. I'm gonna save it, um, save as, oh, you know what, hold on. I'm gonna save it, oh, cancel. Let me save, save, because they're both at the right size. Then now I'm gonna delete her and save this as Grinch 36 inches. Okay, so let's get started. Um, well, let's just see what his dimensions are for all the pieces, and then we can talk about what we should do. So last year, what I did was uh, there was a seam here, and again, he was at 30 inches, so it's gonna be a little bit different. There is a seam right across the ankles. I used dark green glitter cardstock. You could not see it at all. I did a comparison, which I will include on my Instagram again. I did him exactly the bottom part here in a green regular cardstock. And even though we did it at the skinniest part of the ankles, all I could see were the seams. <laughs> so definitely, I prefer the, you know, the, the glitter cardstock for that reason. Um, the other place that we had um, was the red. I think I did a seam, I cut off the arms. So I did a seam right here and maybe a seam right here. Again, it was with red glitter cardstock. You couldn't see it at all. It looked like one piece for the whole sweater. All right, so let's ungroup this for a second and see what all the dimensions are. Um, so let's look at this red. So his sweater is 16 inches across. So again, I'm almost wondering if I just did a seam right here, like look at how small that would be right here, that this would be fine as one piece. And then, um, yeah, so I'm very tempted to do that there. Um, I think our face should be fine. Yeah, everything else should be seamless. Um, so let's look at this bottom and see what we have. So we have 11.7 going across. So that's a little bit too big for 11 and a half, but it's tiny. We can, we can mess around with that piece for sure. Um, and he is 15 inches high. So again, we could, wait, this is at 36 inches and he's, yeah, 36 inches. So, Let's look at this piece again. So 15 inches. Um, I mean, I guess the easiest thing would be again to just slice it right here straight across. Um, I mean, we could be fancy and do this, but that we still have another seam over here. So I almost feel like we might as well just slice it right here. All right, so let's do that. Let's look at all these individual pieces. Here's the hat, um, that looks good. Here's our white. Okay, now the face, I did remember last year. I did the nose the same color as the face because I wasn't interested in making two different colors. And then also, I almost wanna do, let's see. So the face is one piece for the forehead. All right, let's just go to color sync real quick over here and I'm gonna change this little nose up here to be the same color. I'm not interested in making it complicated. Um, okay, the other thing that you may notice is look at, look at this black outline. It's not, um, it's not a full image, it's just an outline. So let's click on that. Oh, well, let's go to layers. Um, go ahead and scroll down to the black and let's just click on it. And what you wanna do is I wanna fill it in because I want all my colored pieces to sit on top of it. So I'm gonna go to contour and just click on hide all and it's gonna give us one black solid background, which is what I want. Um, wait a minute, do we want that? Hold on, let's go back to contour real quick. Um, I don't want, I think I like it clear like that. So now we have a solid black background, which I will move over over here. We will slice this up in a second. 
let's look at everything else. Now everything else should be fine, so we need to slice up the legs, right? So we're gonna slice it right around here. Um, let's look at this red. I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna zoom in for a second to look at this red sweater. The red sweater, yeah, it is all in one piece, but like I said, I think I'm gonna slice it like right here where no one's gonna notice. So let's zoom out. The only other thing that I would wanna fix is, oops, I'm gonna zoom back in, is his fingers. So this is all one piece, right? This piece is okay. I think for this though, I, I don't, do I wanna make this? I mean, I guess it's a big enough piece. All right, I think last year, because it was a little bit smaller, what I did was I added a little green piece here. So the hands, instead of it being in three pieces, I welded it so that it was one piece. So it looks something like this. I mean, his hands are already funky. So it's not like someone's gonna say, oh my God, why, why is the hand one piece? Because the hand over here is, this is one piece and it doesn't look like a hand to me. <laughs> so um, you can do that in, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it be three pieces. This hand be three pieces and this hand be two pieces. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Everything else looks good. So let's bring in um, a square to slice up this arm, okay? So when you're slicing, um, you can only slice two items at one time. So it's gonna be my square and the red, right? And I'm leaving this big right now just so that we can see it. Um, you wanna make sure that we're bringing this into two pieces, right? The sweater into two pieces. So one piece needs to be completely in the square. So I'm going to make this square, I'm gonna unlock it and make it really big because I wanna make sure that this whole arm is covered in my square. And I'm gonna slice it right here. Look how tiny that is. No one's gonna notice that this sweater is in two pieces. So I love this. Um, all right, so let's grab that. It's already um, selected. So hit the shift key and then click on the red sweater. And that should highlight both items. And you know that we did it properly because we only picked up two pieces and slicing is available. If we picked up more than two pieces or we picked up one piece, then it will be grayed out. You will not be able to slice. So go ahead and click slice and then go, and you can get rid of the slice results. So we don't need that square anymore. We don't need this grayed out piece. I mean, look how tiny that, that little split, that little seam is. So now we have this is 5.3 by 4.1, so it's good. This is 12.3 by 9.2, so it's a still a little bit too long, but I'm gonna try to shift this. So I'm gonna just rotate a little bit. Okay, and you see how it's the same piece. We haven't done anything, but design space measures um, width, the most left to the most right, and the difference. So if I rotate this a little bit more, do you see now it's 11.8, so I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more. It's now 11.2 by 10.2, so I it's fine. So I'm gonna move this aside. Um, let's zoom out. And now all we have left is his legs. So again, I'm going to um, grab a square. So let's get that. And let's unlock it and make sure that the square covers the whole bottom, right? And let's slice it like right around here. Okay, so grab the two items and slice. And then let's make sure that our measurements are, are good now. So this is now 9.6 by 12.1. So it's a little high, but remember we have the option of rotating it a little bit and let's see, and now it's fine, 9.6 by 11.3. So this is good, and look at the seams, it's gonna be minimal. And again, we're gonna be using green glitter cardstock, so we shouldn't have a problem. So let's get rid of this. Now these two things though, they're together, and so it's 11.7, I'm gonna want to just separate the feet out. So I'm going to use contour to do this, when you use contour to break up pieces, then you need, if you wanna break it into two pieces, then you need two copies of this. 
If you want to break it up into three pieces, you need three copies. So um, I'm going to do left and right. So I'm going to make a duplicate copy. And then I'm just going to go to contour and I'm going to click on one. So remove that. So here's my left foot all by itself, right? And then let's get the right foot contour. <clears throat> and I'm selecting, I don't want the left foot. And there you go. So now you have two. And then this way you can maybe um, minimize and be more efficient with your cutting. All right, so the Grinch is super easy, right? I think that's it. All we have left is the black piece. So let's zoom out. Now our black piece, he is 16 inches across. So we're gonna need two columns, right? Because we're using 11 or we're using 12 by 12 cardstock. And so in this case, I'm gonna do 11 by 11 squares. So I need 11 plus 11 is 22. And then we need, um, so we need four rows, right? Because 11 times four is 44. 11 times three is only 33 inches, which would not be enough to cover this. So let's build our eight squares, okay? So let's bring in our square. And I like to make them flushed because it's easiest to piece it together later when you push up straight against each other. The seams are gonna be more minimal then. And I wanna just make sure that there's no over uh, overlays and not any gaps in this. So I want eight puzzle pieces that are gonna be big and they all butt up against each other. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So this square, we're gonna make it 11 by 11 because we can technically cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half, but I don't like dealing with half inches. And very rarely does it make a difference. So in this case, it does not, because just think about his width is 16.6, right? So even if I did 11 and a half, 11 and a half and 11 and a half is 23 inches, or 11 plus 11 is 22 inches. I need two columns no matter what, okay? All right, trying to convince you. <laughs> okay, so here's our first square. Let's put it, let's go to our position feature and round up because we wanna make sure that we're building our flush squares. It's easier to do it this way. So 51.7 becomes 52, 22.3 becomes 22. Basically, all we're saying is our X coordinate is the one that's running across right here. So we're saying go to 52 and then go down 22 and here's the beginning of our square. That's all this is. So let's duplicate this. So we have our other square, put it really close. If you put it really close, you don't have to do any math at all. You just round up, okay? So 63.3 becomes 63, 22.1 becomes 22. I'll show you the math behind it. So this first one is at 52, right? And the square is 11 inches, so 52 plus 11 is 63, and this is where our next square is, all right? So now, grab both squares, duplicate it, because they're already flushed with each other. Now we're just gonna make this bottom set flushed with the top one. So again, put it really close. 51.8 becomes 52, 33.2 becomes 33. All right, now we have four squares flush with each other, right? Grab all four and duplicate. Now we've built pretty much our eight squares. So put this one really close. And this is already at 52, perfect. This needs to be at 44. Okay, so we have our eight squares. We're gonna put this guy on top, arrange, send to the front. What we're looking for here, and I'm gonna zoom in, so I apologize for all this moving up and down. So let's move him over. But what we're looking for right now is you're gonna be able to see where the seams are. So this is a really good example right here. This hat, I don't wanna cut it right here and then have to deal with the small piece. My whole goal of cutting him up into eight pieces is cutting him up into eight big pieces. I don't wanna deal with any like fingernails or like, <laughs> you know, little pieces to keep track of. So right now this looks good. Um, let's move him over. Or yeah, so this line is gonna go up the middle, right? Um, and hold on for just one second. Uh, hold on. 
Let me bring him in. I just want to see what he looks like again. So Grinch. And there he is. This is an uploaded image. This is not a design space image. So I bought it on Etsy. There are many designers out there doing the same image, okay? So you can find it. The one, the designer that I bought it from is no longer selling it. So that's why I'm not, people ask all the time. Um, okay, so there is a little slit going up here. So I'm almost tempted to move him over so that to make sure the leg covers it. And I think right around here is good. Okay, um, so this is gonna be, the tip is now one piece, right? All right, so this looks good. Um, and actually, this square, I think we can make, we can scoot this one over, so. Oh, it's not enough. Okay, so let me undo this. I thought maybe I could get him, get his head in one, but it's too big. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna slice one square at a time, okay? So here's my top square and my black image. Slice. And you know what, while we're here, let me delete this. We don't need him anymore. Um, let's grab the second piece and slice. And you see how like as soon as my um, cursor touches the black, I just let go. I just need to touch it a little bit to grab my two items. Let's slice that. And the reason why is, I'm gonna show you here. If I went a little bit too far and I grabbed this third item, you see how slicing is not available? So I just make it a habit. Like as soon as I grab my two pieces, I let go. and we're almost done. This one is so easy. So this is a perfect, if you've never done it, this is a super easy project to do. He's gonna look amazing, whoa. Okay, so Design Space Get has a glitch every once in a while like this. So undo it. The way I get around this glitch is, and I used to see it a lot, I haven't seen it in a while, is ignore that one. Let that one be the last piece. Go up here and slice from the top to the bottom. And hopefully we don't have a problem. All right, so let's see. Okay, so it's all good. All right, I'm gonna zoom back out. And my next thing that I like to do, and this is this is just because it's me, um, I move all my pieces over and I keep them in order because it helps me piece it later together. <laughs> So that way when I look at this piece, I know which side is right side up and which side is bottom. Um, normally it's not a big deal when you use glitter cardstock because the bottom side is white, but with the black, sometimes I pull it off the mat and then I accidentally flip it over and then I'm trying to figure out where the piece goes and it's not working for me, so that's why I do that. Okay. And that's it, oh my gosh. He's gonna look amazing. So what I was saying is, you know, if you've never done an off the mat, this is the perfect one to do. He's gonna look amazing. You don't even need to use glitter cardstock except for the green. I highly recommend that because his feet um, or his legs. But everything else like the red and, oh no, the red too because we sliced it in the arm. <laughs> but the red and the green need to be glitter, but the white doesn't have to be glitter. Um, and the black doesn't need to be glitter. So it's a pretty like cheap project to do. All right, so this is it. I'm gonna save it. And then I'm gonna show you what the Make It screen looks like. Because we have small pieces here, we don't have to cut it individually. I'm gonna show you how to move things on the map. So let's go to Make It. So he's gonna be three feet and looking very, very seamless. So I'm excited. All right, so this is my white glitter cardstock. Um, what I like to do is I like to move everything up. And I do this because I do so many of these projects that I end up saving my glitter cardstock. So, and I'm gonna move this one over here. This one I'm gonna scoot, I mean, you can even do a better job, but this way next time I have all of this to use and all of this bottom. It's a lot easier to use when you have bigger pieces. Um, 
All right, so that's our white. Here is our black. This one is teeny tiny, right? So let's move him. Click on the image, click on the three dots, and move object, and we're gonna move it to another map. So here you can kind of see what everything looks like. I almost feel like this guy can go over here, um, or actually, let's see. He can go over here, I think. And then this guy can go over here. The two feet we can split up. So instead of it being, what is that? Eight, eight pages or eight um, pieces, sheets of cardstock, we could probably get it down to what? One, two, three, four. All right, so let's do that. So let's move that to this one. So here's our foot. The only thing is you need to make sure that you move it so that you, you know you actually have a clean cut. So something like this, perfect, right? We still have space here. So let's go move something else. Um, we said we're gonna move this guy, right? Um, hit the three dots, move object, and let's see where he fits. Um, I was gonna move him over here. Oh, so that works. And then let's go and this one, let's click on it and move object. And let's move it to put the skinny one, this one. Okay, so this is not working, but see how it overlaps a little bit, but we can twist this around. Aha, yes. <laughs> right so now this fits so you can spin it you can move it to another mat I mean right there we saved three sheets of cardstock and there's still one more foot that we can move so let's move this one move object and we can move it so it's up to you I mean we can move it here or we can move it here and it would fit here and then that way you have cardstock here that you can save um, or I always end up using my black cardstock, um, the leftovers, so that I can tape things, use my tape runner, and then that's like, so it doesn't get on my mat, so. All right, so, awesome, right? Okay, here's our red. It, The red, it's saying this piece is too long, but that's because we can shift it and it would fit, oh, hold on. I'm gonna shift it a little bit at a time. So I do use a 12 by 24 mat. If you don't have one, it's okay. You can just make sure that this fits. See, this fits now, right? 11 by 11. You can change the mat size and say it's um, 11 by 11, or I'm sorry, 12 by 12. Oh, it won't let you. Okay, so if you didn't have a 12 by 12 piece of card um, mat, then you can move these to a new mat. So I will show you. So move object, and you can create a new map. So create the red, and so see, it moves it onto here. And then this one, so we need to move this guy, but I think this can fit up here. <laughs> it's not letting me move it. Hold on. it's not letting me move this let me move this and see if it lets me move this now all right we'll get back to that one that one I think can fit up here but if it didn't and I don't know why it's glitching on me right now we should move it to the other mat so when you have just even though it says a 12 by 24 mat if you just put the 12 by 12 piece of cardstock on here which will be fine because this piece right here is only 11 inches um, it will just cut. It doesn't need to know that it's a 12 by 12 mat. So this one we need to work on, but it's just a glitch. Um, here are the yellow eyes, so that looks good. Here's the green. The green right now is showing a little long, right? But we just need to move it. And so now it fits, you know, it's 11, less than 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Now all these little pieces, I would move to the side so I can see if I can move anything further up here and really, you know, minimize. Um, so this can go up here. And you can, you know, 
really shift things around. Um, this is as efficient as you can make it as efficient as you want it to be. Let's look at our green pieces. So actually, and if you do have a 12 by 24 mat, you could put all of this on there, but here's the thing. The only drawback of cutting glitter cardstock on a 12 by 12 or a 12 by 24 mat and using 12 by 12 and 12 by 12 is that your blade gets dirty. And so your the second half of your cuts are not as clean. So I'm almost tempted to just make this a new mat. So I'm going to move this. And you'll see after every cut, if I use glitter cardstock, I actually take the blade out of my machine. I push it up so that the blade pops up and then I just blow on it. There's so much glitter that gets stuck on there so your cuts aren't as clean. So you just wanna make sure. So I'm moving that face onto this green mat. So I'm gonna have two 12 by 12 green mats cutting. I'm gonna move, let's see, um, oops, sorry. This foot, I feel like, can he fit up here? Oh no, it can't. Can it? Oh, it can, yay. Um, so that fits, this can fit here as well. So you can still minimize and be really efficient. That will cut fine, so that's one 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, and here's the other one. And this one, of course, you could do something like like this so next time you have a big chunk of green glitter cardstock that you could use for another project all right so here's the red let's go back up to this red one and see if if it's still gonna not let me move this piece all right now it let me move okay so I want to flip this a little bit maybe I can't get it to work so let's move this one, move object, and move it with the other red piece, this one. And you're done. That's it, oh my gosh. All right, so I'm gonna cut this, and then I will have an assembly video, and it's gonna look amazing. All right, um, let me know if you have any comments or questions or special requests, especially Christmas ones. I'm super excited to get a head start on Christmas this year. And I know with the whole pandemic that I feel like we're gonna go crazy for Christmas because we're at home all the time. So let's start decorating. Um, all right, and you can send me an email after if you post your special request and you have a lot of details or files to send me. It's Anne, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.